Hey, Deserving Listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. So I'm, I'm going to say, hey, look, Rich, um, I thought you were my friend. You know, quit talking to my mom. Let me have a conversation. Wait, Rich is talking to your mom? He talks to her like every day. It, That's it, bizarre. That make you feel it's very bizarre. What is going on with your mom and you? So she kind of felt yeah. like, oh, you're. P I mean, I would say it's bizarre. I would say that it's unusual, right? Like if my friend Umberto were to talk with my mom every day, I would find that to be unusual. And I might have some questions about it, but I would hope that I wouldn't just inherently think that it's bizarre, quote unquote, and not like healthy or something. You know, people can have relationships, friendships with whoever they want to. And sometimes your friend's mom is the person that you just become really good friends with and like to have conversations with it. You know, that's okay. Now, on the flip side, there could be something weird and bizarre going on there. Based on what we saw, it could just be that the friend has some ulterior motive, consciously or unconsciously, to be in this situation more. And the two of them are drumming up weird perspectives about Ed and Liz, or they are rationally upset and supporting each other as they're watching Ed and Liz destroy their lives according to their perspective. I don't know, but I wouldn't immediately go, ew, gross, you know. Whenever anyone goes bizarre or ew, I immediately run it through the litmus test in my brain as to whether or not that makes logical sense. There are so many things in our society that people go, ew, bizarre, weird, so many things that in fact, I would say the vast majority of things that people go ew to are not truly ooable, if you know what I mean. Sure, like every day. It, That's it, bizarre. Does that make you feel? Do you know what I mean? Now, the other friend followed it up with, how does that make you feel? That's a good question. Instead of going, ew. Now, maybe they're doing that because they are trying to be supportive of Ed because the, by implication, the friend and the mom are conspiring against him unfairly or something. You know, maybe that's what, where they're coming from. Very bizarre. What is going on with your mom and you? So she kind of felt yeah. like, oh, you're picking Liz over me. I'm like, I'm picking me over me and I'm in love with Liz. To be honest, we're not in a good place. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm reminded of the mom's rejection too. We saw that with his daughter, both with Rose and now with Liz. And it's hard to know what's going on there. Something's going on there. I don't know what. If I could talk to the mom, obviously, and the daughter, I would get more of a perspective because we just hear little bits and pieces from them. So I don't know what's happening there, but something's going on there. It either, it, you know, it could be justified, but it doesn't seem to be entirely justified. It's completely right off Ed, you know, in relation to what I was saying earlier. But I don't know, maybe, maybe it is legit. It does make sense. You know, what the daughter will say is that the age difference is the big issue. And yeah, I'm reminded of this whole thing. And then Ed, after Rose or Liz, really apologized to his daughter and said, I'll never do that again. It must have been after Rose and then, and then he did do it again. But it's like, what did he do? There's, there's nothing inherently logical in terms of what they're presenting to us on the show, and God knows what's really happening behind the scenes, that would necessitate his daughter and mother completely rejecting him. I, I just don't see it. But which, if it is how it looks, which God knows if it is, then that just tells me something else is going on in the family. I, I don't have a strong hypothesis. What do you think? For my mom, when she found out we got engaged, I think her reaction was, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, I think I did have a, an hypothesis, was that the, and this isn't strong, obviously, but the daughter has been harmed by his decisions. I think he might even agree with this, that Ed can be inconsiderate and selfish. He exhibited that with Rose and somewhat with Liz and just sort of barrels forward, you know, the STD test and, uh, oh yeah, I don't want to have kids with Rose, even though he was telling her that he, so he just sort of is self-centered in that way. And I imagine that the daughter suffered from that throughout her childhood. And maybe there's something with the mom involved with, you know, Ed and the mom and and the daughter, some, something's going on there. A lot of pain that the daughter has gone through that Ed has not fully apologized for or the daughter hasn't fully come to reckon with or healed from or something. I don't know, it was just a complete speculation shot in the dark. And 
then when he is with Rose or with Liz, all of that pain gets focused in on that one decision. And it, it, because there's a little bit, so say she didn't have any of those traumas. She would say, well, I love my dad, but I'm not really super enthusiastic about this. It'd be a little bit of a rub there, but because of all those past traumas that haven't been realized or, or healed from, then any little issue in the relationship becomes overblown because of all that pain from the, so everything gets funneled into that one behavior. If, if you are, if you're going to move forward with this, because I'm uncomfortable with it, and really I'm only a little uncomfortable, but I feel very uncomfortable based on all these other things that I'm piling on, then you are telling me you truly do not care about me. But if you, if you comply with me and you don't uh, you know, engage in a relationship with this person, then it will feel, I'll, I'll, it's a fantasy that the person has that finally they're not self-centered. And actually that kind of lends itself to that, that hypothesis that if you do this, it's yet another, it's the straw on the camel's back of you being self-centered and not thinking about my feelings. And if you don't do it and you reject Rose, you reject Liz, then it's not one, not one straw on the back of the camel and maybe a handful of straw off the camel's back showing me that you actually do care about my feelings. But, it, but from the outside, in terms of the way it's edited, it's like, what's it to you? Uh, and then she focuses on the age difference because she doesn't really have the kid, the you know, the adult child doesn't really have anything else to go off of, right? Now, of course, people on the internet say like, well, Liz is the same age or a little younger than his daughter, kind of maybe kind of looks like his daughter. It's creepy and all this kind of thing. And I just, I, I don't relate to it. It's possible. But what's the implication? Ed wants to have sex with his daughter and found a facsimile of his daughter to have sex with? I mean, is that really what people think? Is that possible? Yeah, but that's not, uh, that's not a typical presentation of someone that is a predator or something. It's not, it, anyway, what do you think? <laughs> I, whenever I bring this stuff up, I'm always just like, oh, Kirk, you're really going to be targeted with people hating you because I don't see any kind of nuanced conversation about Ed uh, online. Again, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that he has not been abusive. Uh, it's very likely he has been abusive to Liz. You could say there was some abuse to Rose. Those things probably happened. We can't really know, but they probably did. So I'm not, I, I'm just, <laughs> just a therapist saying things. We on both sides got rid of negative people. His mom's no longer living at the house. Okay. Ed, how does your mom feel about... Right, so this is the tell-all at the end of Dating Life, because we saw, you know, the others from, from Dating Life. We saw Debbie and Colts and, and those folks. Your engagement to Liz. She's not happy because she feels like I'm choosing Liz over her. Yeah, and that one, we don't have any background on that because we didn't hear much of anything. Now, now the mom could be coming from a place of you are destroying everything. You know, it would be rational for the mom if the daughter is having that reaction. Because in the past, the mom wasn't rejecting Ed for being with Rose. So maybe the mom is more flexible with that. But for the mom to endure the pain of seeing her granddaughter suffer, the mom would say, Ed, you can't do this. And maybe the mom also has a typical reaction of just like your relationship with Liz, with Liz is a disaster. It's too painful for me to sit by and watch that. I can't. I'm. I can't support this. I can't be with you. Maybe something like that. But we didn't hear much from the mom, and maybe we will. But I'm guessing we won't. I don't know if the mom is that interested. And I think that's maybe why they're setting up this conversation with a friend. Because I'm guessing the producers would want a conversation with the mom. But I'm also guessing that the mom is like, yeah, I'm not really interested in that kind of reality TV content provision. I don't like the fact that like, I feel like I'm being blamed for something. No. And I came you back into this Here. relationship. What? No. It wasn't fair to Liz. No. Yeah. Because now she has, she's, she's, getting, she's taking the blame. Yeah. Now she's getting put as like the, the, the villain. And like, that's not fair. I don't know if they, do they see it that way? I don't remember that. It's possible, but 
I think they see Ed as the villain. I think they don't, I don't know if they're blaming Liz. I think they were saying, Ed, you are the one harming me by doing this. So I, I don't know if they're blaming her, but it, you know, maybe they are. And it would make sense that Liz would feel that way because they're giving an ultimatum. If you're going to be with that woman, then you're, I'm done with you. In the past, when Ed and I would break up, he would talk about all our problems to everybody. And I always looked like the bad person. Oh, okay, so maybe the family is against her. Yeah, that's a whole other thing that I've talked about several times, which is everyone needs to be aware, both the Eds of the world need to be aware that if they only tell their friends and family about the negative things, then of course their friends and family are going to have a very distorted view of, of the person you're in a relationship with and of the relationship. And if you're a friend or family member that is hearing a lot of negativity from your person, from your loved one about their partner, you have to remember that you, unless you put a lot of controls on your perspective, you are going to adopt a very distorted negative view about that individual. I almost never hear anybody talk about how to regulate that, how to say, well, I only hear the negative stuff, so I'm just gonna take guess. Because you'll hear me doing this, you'll hear me, because the show presents just the negativity to us, and or frequently they will do that. And so I will be confused as to, as to what's going on. Then I have, okay, that, and I'll remind myself, sometimes I'll do it out loud. I'll say, well, I assume behind the scenes, these other things are happening, that behind the scenes, 99% of the time, it's not conflictual. It's just a regular relationship with often affection and bonding and, and that sort of stuff. And I, I do that to counteract that. I think I got that, if I think about it, when I am working with individuals and couples, which is my entire practice at this point. In the past, I used to work about a third of my practice was with families and, and teenagers and occasionally with younger kids. But, you know, for the past number of years, it's adults and, and couples. And I will only hear sometimes about the negative sides of things. And if I don't counteract that with some reminders of what likely is going on behind the scenes, then I will take this perspective of like, why are you in this relationship? Or this relationship should end. You know, it, it's hard to get out of that kind of transference. And then the last thing you told me about Liz is, I'm good, I'm moving on. This is the first relationship Ed's had since his divorce and he's desperate. They're both insecure and they're both selfish. It's been about four months. Okay, I'm remembering now what the friend was saying, that he believes that this is Ed's first relationship since his divorce 20 some odd years ago. I guess we're not counting Rose as a real relationship. Maybe the friend is like, that was brief or something. But then he says he thinks they're both insecure and they're not healthy for each other. A lot hasn't been said in this time period and it's overdue. Liz definitely fears my influence because I've been there the whole time and I'm always gonna tell him the truth. I think Liz, she's an opportunist. She's not here for the right reasons. And that was my initial reaction when I found out that they got engaged. He has his opinions. He thinks that Liz is up to no good. I don't remember that detail. Do we th really think that Liz is up to no good? I mean, maybe, it doesn't seem that way to me. It seems like they legitimately love each other. It could be a problematic relationship, but I don't think it's faked in any way. I mean, it could be. And then he said the phrase, I'm gonna tell him the truth. People need to be able to differentiate between truth and opinion. <laughs> I feel like we need, if I was to change one thing about our society, well, there'd be yeah, a number of things, but I think this would be top 20, is that literally every day in school from kindergarten through 12th grade, there's at least 15 to 45 minutes spent on differentiating between the truth and your opinion because it's such a problem these days and he is exhibiting that issue. It is not the truth that Liz is up to no good. It's your opinion. You have your reasons to believe that, but that's not the truth. And it's okay that you have your opinion. It doesn't mean that opinion... I feel like people think opinion means that it's not true or that it's highly debatable or something. You can have a, a you can have an opinion that you're pretty sure is true but but you just never know if if it's if it's not. And to state it as truth instantly invalidates you, especially if you're in conflict with someone. If you say to someone, "Look, it's just the truth. You're an idiot." 
or it's just the truth. You never listen to me, this kind of thing. Well, the other person will be like, that's not true. So thus, I disregard everything you said because you just claimed that that is quote unquote true. So you clearly have no idea what the truth is and or you're so self-centered and narcissistic, you believe your opinions are the law of the land. And so I'm just going to disregard everything you say. You have to be able to say things in a tentative, accurate way, a way that reflects reality, which is that your opinion is not necessarily the truth. It might be, but there's, you know, it's just an opinion until you know for sure. Person that tried to destroy you, to try to take you down, you know, like, well, Richard, what about what I did to her? I mean, well, I broke up with her eight times well, via yeah, text. I, I know that. I know. I mean, I was a head. Right. I, I was I'll, a head. And I told you you were too along yeah. the way too. But in my heart, that's after six months of therapy and six months of total separation. Okay. Well, I'm a little disheartened to hear that. It sounds like, well, maybe it was six months until this point, and he's still in therapy, but. It kind of sounds like it was a six-month stint of therapy, and now it's over. That would worry me if I were the friend, but I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe we won't. But okay, so they're talking about it, and Ed had a good comeback to that. The friend's like, Liz is a horrible person, and, and Ed's like, I was horrible to her, too. And I realized that's who I wanted to be with. I tell you I'm engaged, and it was just hate dude right yeah, i mean yeah, I'm not, but you, you just come out of the blue to move well, richard on. it came out of the blue for me too that's because you're impulsive that. you're impulsive if if you walk across the street and you got hit by a car once wouldn't i say hey ed are you sure you want to cross this street again yeah absolutely it's not a, an exact analogy because it doesn't have that kind of consequence but yeah that's okay and if in this analogy your friend says, well, I hear you, but I still want to walk across. I, I want to take the risk again. Now, if you if they were walking up to a cliffside and they wanted to jump out off without a parachute, then that's different. But you're ta the analogy is good because you're crossing the street. You might get run over by a car, but you might not be. And you plead with your friend. You're taking a risk. And they're like, I hear you. I, I realize the risk. I'm willing to take that because the payoff on the other side of the street is so big. I'm willing to take that risk. Then as a friend, you say, okay, well, I, I, I said my piece because I love my friend and the choice is theirs, not mine. You got hit the last time. Rich, I choose Liz. That's it. And you can't accept it. I'm choosing her over everyone. My mom doesn't accept her. My daughter doesn't accept her. What about your mom right ready. now? Moms, give me the guilt trip. I'm like, look, mom, I love you. I don't know if that's such a great <laughs> convincing point. Look, I'm, I've rejected everyone in my life for her. I don't know if that's going to convince the friend. I think the friend might be like, yeah, that's exactly my point. So I, I think he could have just stuck with, look, we both treated each other badly. I think Ed could also apologize to the friend for feeding the friend with clearly a lot of negative information about Liz because I forgot that the friend thinks that Liz is like this horrible partner and abusive essentially is what the friend is coming across at. And according to Ed himself, he's like, look, there were some things she did to me that were bad, but I was by far the worst partner in this relationship. So it would stand to reason that the friend was fed a lot of distorted one-sided information. So Ed could say something along those lines. Yeah. She calls and you talk to her every day. Don't you think that's kind of weird? Not as close as we've been as friends and family. Let my mom adopt you as her son. She likes you more than I do. I just don't need to see it. Richard and my mom were, were sort of close when we were friends, but he has formed this new level of a relationship with my mom. Who talks to somebody else's mom on a daily basis? That's kind of um, weird. So there's that thing again. It's weird. Well, explain. <laughs> Whenever anyone does this, I, I'm like, give me your... Uh, your analysis. Give me why is it weird to you? Well, it, you'll always hear people say, well, it's just not done. It's creepy. You're repeating the same sentiment. Why is it weird? Why is it creepy? Well, it's just so unusual. It's so strange. Okay. Why is it weird? Why is it, why is it wrong? You're, you're essentially saying it's wrong. It's like a sin or illegal or immoral, unhealthy. Give me whatever give me some data here. Well, it's just not done. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> then I'm not going to regard your argument. Now, he could say, 
it makes me feel jealous because I want to be close to my mom. Okay, well then there's your problem. Not that your friend is friends with your mom. He could say that I feel like they're conspiring against me. Okay, you could call that out. But just the fact that your friend is talking with your mom every day and they're good friends or uh, maybe your friend never had a mom figure in his life and maybe the mom really likes him as sort of an adopted son. They're kind of using that language. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I just, do you think something romantic is going on? Uh, certainly if that were true, that would be weird, but they're consenting adults. So, you know, <laughs> what's the big deal there? It, you could obviously have a conversation about that, but do you think that your friend is trying to scam your mom or the other way around? You know, let's talk about that, but just these weird, these, he's falling into the same trap that people do about him. They will say, well, you're involved with Liz. She's younger than your daughter. Okay, what's wrong with that? Well, it's just weird. Okay, well, what's wrong with that? It's creepy. Okay, what's wrong with that? Well, it, no one does that. Okay, what's wrong with that? <laughs> it's just, you're, you're doing the same thing. Ed. I love my mom to death, but me being with Liz is not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt my daughter. It's not going to hurt my mom. Well, can still. Period. Can you still? Now, I agree with that. But before I get the comments, it's been a while since I've addressed this, I believe, because I can imagine people like, oh, well, I know why age difference in relationships, you know, referring to Ed and Liz, is a problem because it involves grooming or something. And I won't even go down that ridiculous road. Or they'll say that they're at different stages of life. And I'll be like, okay, so by an, according to that logic, let's say you have two people that they're, they meet when they're 30 years old, and one person is about to enter a doctoral program to become a medical uh, professional, and they have 10, 15 years of education and postdoc work to go through. That is a massive phase of life, right, to begin one's career, to go into debt. Whereas the other 30-year-old has three kids already from a previous relationship and is well into their career. They're moving up the ranks at, in their career and they'll never go backwards. They'll never start at the bottom again. So by that definition, those two people are creepy and it's unhealthy for those two people to get married. Now, what other people say is, well, okay, but what about maturity? You know, different levels of maturity. Okay, do we think that Ed is that much more mature than Liz? I don't think anyone's gonna think that. Now, if there was a difference in maturity, then, that, then I would actually say, well, let's look at that. Meaning that, let's say you had two 25-year-olds, and one 25-year-old, for whatever reason, developmentally speaking, is much younger. Maybe they come across, due to trauma or experience or cognitive ability, comes across more like a 16-year-old. They're very naive. They are emotionally uh, dysregulated often. They, they don't have a lot of inner resources. They don't have a lot of experiences in life. Whereas the other, whereas the, the other person, the other 25 year old has a lot of experience, has a lot of power in their life, has a lot of personal power. And you have those two developmental differences. I would say, hmm, there could be a power differential there. There could be an issue there. There might not be, they could enhance each other in some ways. So. Yeah, but an age gap is not a guarantee that those things are present, is my point. And even if there were different phases of developmental ability or different maturity levels, does that automatically mean that something horrible and immoral and unhealthy is happening? No, it does not. And the data shows that statement is true. Will these help her do, like, I've done everything I can. I don't know about that, dude. I need Rich to stop putting ideas in my mom's head. It's impeding our relationship. Okay, so say that. Say, it's creepy or I don't like it that you're feeding my mom with a bunch of negative thoughts. I don't like that, please stop it. Yeah, but the fact that he's talking to your mom every day, that's, that's not inherently a problem. After 15 years of friendship, it's, it's a hard to swallow. I can just look into his eyes and I know I'm not talking to my friend. You know, it's, there's somebody else I'm talking to now and there's some influence there, but it's his life. He's got to figure this out. It's so weird. We've seen this on the show before. I guess it's possible. I, I don't see that, but obviously he knows Ed a billion times better than I would. Essentially, I think what he's saying is that Liz is, is 
brainwashing Ed <laughs> in some way, not only in in concepts and ideas, but it's not Ed anymore. It's not his friend. His friend has been altered so greatly by the mastermind Liz. Ed isn't there anymore. Ed is no longer in the room. And I guess it's possible, but it's, it's interesting perspective. Where do you think that's coming from? I'm choosing to be with Liz. You don't support it. So what do you want to talk about? That's it. That's it. That's I go my way, you go yours. Yeah, and that's so okay with you. It's an ultimate. You're saying either you accept my decision of who I'm going to be with or you're out of my life. Yeah, I actually didn't necessarily hear that. I, th I thought there might be, or at least there was an absence of that ultimatum from the friend. And it sounded like maybe the friend was open to being a friend with Ed to a limited capacity while still holding on to the idea that Liz is bad for him. And so I th there, but there could have been an inroad there with their relationship. And I think Ed might be kind of jumping the gun and saying like, look, you're either with me or you're against me. And if you're not totally with me, then you're against me, which might be a missed opportunity for Ed to rekindle this relationship. But I, I don't know. That's the f thing that bothers me. Which I love Liz. I want to marry Liz. That's fine. Do that. No one's stopping you. Richard is someone that's been very important to me in my life. Somebody that I trusted more than my own brother. And it's hard, you know, to have to have a conversation with someone that will most likely end our friendship. All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.